Well, here it is. It's Friday, and everybody knows when it's Friday, it's time to go inside EMS. I'm your host, Chris Sabalera. With me as well is my good friend, the one we call Kelly Grace and KG. It's another week. We are back, and as we promised last week, this is the week that we were going to give tips on how to develop your own book. Everybody has a book title in them, and uh, we're going to put everybody on the path of becoming authors. I look forward to it. Uh, I, I don't recommend the way I became an author, um, sitting in the in the passenger seat of an ambulance going through a separation. Well, you know what? But I'm, I'm sure that was very therapeutic. There's a different way, you. better ways to find your views, folks. <laughs> but I, but I think that there were a lot mm -hmm. of that was probably therapeutic for you as well, right? So there's probably. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, and I have talked about that. You've had challenges, I think, with depression in your life, and mm -hmm. you've been very open and honest with it, and that's very heroic for you. Um, cause not a lot of people can admit it like you, but you no. found your therapy in writing, yeah. you found your yeah. therapy in, in, you know, getting that. So it's not a bad thing no. but I, I do want to be more specific. So, you know, sure. Kelly, we've gotten, uh, you've gotten a few, um, emails on this. I've gotten a couple emails on this and this is why we decided to come and talk about this topic. Uh, you you've been it? on a roll the past <laughs> year of really kind of putting out the short story and, uh, you continue on your EMS world tour of educating people. Uh, you've got a couple of articles that have come out, Cecil the Combat, Wombat, Battle of the Waffle House 814. You've got another one that's going to come out. Uh, it's probably coming out here pretty soon, I think, this yeah, week, this as week. a matter of fact, uh, called Call Me Tully. You know, I've written a few books myself, uh, more leadership in nature, nothing that's, uh, uh, you know, really kind of a storyline, but, you know, uh, Ultimate Leadership, 10 Rules for, the, 10 Rules for Success. Those were the rules that I had to develop to be a good leader. I was a horrible leader, as I've talked about on this show. Rule number one, never allow your emotions to dictate your actions. How do you think I learned that rule? And then <laughs> ultimate, success, many, many exactly. yeah. ultimate success, exactly. Ultimate success, strategic leadership, excellence. Those are the skills you need to have uh, to be a good leader. And, and then I've got a couple more. And I was honored enough that they became number one best-selling books. And yeah. Kelly, you've had some great luck. Uh, as well, that over the past uh, few months, you've had a couple hit the number one best-selling uh, mm -hmm. um, mark as well. And we want to be able to give this knowledge to people because, yeah. you know, from when you wrote your first book to where you are today, th there was a lot of time in there that you had yeah, to be able to days. play with some of these stories and really yeah. kind of get them out. But really quick, I mean, your books are really funny. I mean, everybody who knows your style of writing that's in EMS um, we read your articles. You have a, a certain flair to it. Uh, you have a your personality comes out in the mm -hmm. characters. Um, so just really quick, man, give us an overview of Cecil the Combat Wombat. And you know what 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 is this about? Cecil the Combat Wombat is about a uh, uplifted marsupial, uh, a, a staff sergeant running a a detachment of combat engineers. He has thirty. Uh, combat wombats under his command uh, fighting a war in, in uh, the year 2225 in Australia, uh, putting down an aboriginal uprising uh, that's been fomented by uh, outside uh, sources. But uh, Cecil is is kind of like, a imagine the, the wombat version of Rocket the Raccoon. Uh, they're sentient animals. They have all the rights of humans. Uh, and they uh, and they can talk and, and, and do all this sort of thing. And uh, the the way I got the the idea was uh, there was something passed around on social media about how wombats work their enemies to death in in the tunnels. Uh, they get their they they stick their butts out, and when the when the predators try to get their snout in to bite them, they just twerk and crush their heads against the the ceiling of the tunnel. And wombats also poop. Uh, uh cuboidal poop uh their turds are cuboidal so man that's a, i just had to write a uh yeah, write a I mean, story about a combat really kind of go and then my and, favorite and is, the e4 mafia in there too yeah right. i got that's the right. e4 mafia in there and my favorite is battle of waffle house 814 and give us a little overview of that and your next book that's coming out uh call me tully is is an origin story to yeah. waffle house 814 so maybe just waffle. give the listeners a little bit about that yeah, Scattered, Smothered, and Spellbound, the Battle of Waffle House 814. If you've ever, anyone who has ever been to a Waffle House at 2 o'clock in the morning uh, knows that there are some really interesting specimens of humanity uh, found at the Waffle House. Uh, what does it say? They say Denny's is for, is for uh, uh, people who uh, 
uh, Waffle House people who can't fight. So uh, you see some really weird characters at Waffle House. And the reason for that is they're not actually human. Uh, Waffle House, every Waffle House in the country is enchanted with fairy glamour that allows members of the supernatural races to dine at Waffle House and enjoy their scattered, smothered, and covered uh, grits and hash browns uh, without prying eyes. They appear human. So orcs look like uh, like gangbangers, and elves look like Karens, and and uh, hobbits look like little little uh, Mexican gardeners and landscapers, <laughs> this sort of thing. You need, you need a hug, is what you need. But they have to. But but the thing is, all these warring supernatural communities, you know, they uh, fairy just provides the glamour, but uh, they don't keep the peace. So Waffle House needs its own internal uh, security core that keeps the peace in the supernatural community. So. That's what Battle of Waffle House 814 is. They're defending themselves from a, a horde of angry orcs. And we go a little bit backwards and call me Tully <laughs> is really how we got there. Yeah, yeah. Tully Tully becomes the, uh, was an ex-Marine non-com who uh, is, uh, helps save a fairy queen. And in return, she grants Waffle House uh, this this uh, boon. And uh, he becomes the the first recruiter for Whisk. Uh, the Waffle House Internal Supernatural Security Corps, and uh, the the guys, a, a lot of the people in the uh, um, Monster Hunter International fan club, and and the the people that like that kind of Pulp Fiction monster shoot 'em up stuff, have really embraced uh, Battle of Waffle House, and it's kind of an homage to uh, an homage to uh, to right. their uh, their um, mindset. So, but I just want to say that all of Kelly Grayson's proceeds to his books go to supporting children so his children by the way so <laughs> my I children mean, that's right your thank children. you for contributing to that's, the double wide fund that's One day right, i'll be retirement. able to afford that swanky swanky double wide i've had my eye on for so long but uh you know so you know it's it's really interesting so you have a little bit different spin you're actually writing you know character type books mm -hmm. uh and like i said you know they're entertaining and you know just check them out and one of the things, though, is we want to be able to give people tips because I, I, I think we said last week, and if I didn't say it, I apologize. Everybody has a book title in them. So I, I want you to think if you're listening to this show, pause the show right now. And I want you just to spend a couple minutes to think about if you were going to write a book, what was your book title? And send it to us at the show at EMS1.com. And I want to be able to read them and know what your book title is. If we could be a resource to you and help you write this book, let's do that. But um, whether you're going to write, you know, character books that has a beginning, a middle and a climax mm -hmm. to the end, or you're going to write a book about your paramedic career, everybody has stories in their career yeah. that they can write about. One of the things that I always wanted to write about and I never did, I wanted to write a book called History, H-I-S-S-T-O-R-Y. And mm -hmm. I wanted to... I wanted to um, interview the veterans from World War II to talk oh, yeah, about their experiences with each other. Not war, but the fun times and the, the, the stressless times and how they got, you know, when they had downtime, how did they interact together? So H-I-S-S-T-O-R-Y. But anyway. Um, that, you know, that's an excellent idea. And and that sort of thing is is what makes a great story because the on the face of it you think that that a story like that would be about combat and and the horrors and trials of combat uh but a lot of what my writing focuses on now is is what exactly what you talked about it's you know soldiers don't fight for lofty political goals right uh, and strategic goals they fight for the guy beside them uh so what makes that relationship uh and what makes you willing to fight and bleed and die for the man beside you uh that's that's the kind of powerful story yeah. that uh that that history uh his story can can tell that's a yeah. great idea so i want to give you a my process of writing kelly then i'd love to hear how you do these character mm -hmm. books because there may be people out there that want to do a book about ems and talk about their career there may be people out there that want to do leadership books mm -hmm. there may be someone that wants to do a book like you're doing in the fantasy realm and for me, one of the things that I always start off with is a concept. The concept was my last book that I wrote was Ultimate Coaching, Skills mm -hmm. for Developing a Highly Engaged Workforce. And one of the things that I start off with is that concept to say, okay, what do I, and actually the book changed, right? I wanted to write the book based on 
how to develop a coaching business. Because mm -hmm. people were always asking me, how do you develop a coaching business? But then as I started to write it, I said, wait a minute, I'm going to talk to them about writing a business. They may not, they may be horrible coaches. Let me yeah. write a book on the coaching skill, right? So then what I do is I outline the 10 chapters that I want to write about, always 10 chapters. And then I develop the outline of what I want each chapter to look like, because yeah. I want them to look the same. I'm going to start off with a scenario. I'm going to go ahead and give the problem. I'm going to give the solution of the problem. And then I'm going to go at the end and tie it all together to say, this is the way that it should have looked from the beginning. Right. Yeah. And then I go ahead and write them to make sure that they all stay the same. I always start with objectives to say in this chapter, I want to hit these three objectives, just like you, just like you develop mm -hmm. a course, right? We yeah. usually develop a course the wrong way. We start with slides thing. and we start adding stuff to the, what are we teaching them, right? It's all yeah. based on objectives, but that's how I kind of start those books where if you're going to do an EMS book, if you're going to do a leadership book, start with a concept, develop your chapter titles, and then make sure all the chapters look alike. How do you set off to write Cecil the Combat Wombat? Well, you know, it's there There are two types of writers, uh, two broad types of writers. There are outliners, which you are, uh, but but you approach you approach your your books as a lesson that you're planning. You know, you have an objective, you have a framework for it. Um, uh, fiction is a little little different. Uh, and uh, fiction, you get the writers that also the other type of writers, we call them pantsers. Uh, they fly by the seat of their pants and they don't know where the story's going. They just get so into it and they just tell the story. And it's like, oh, that's what that character is going to do. Uh, I'm kind of uh, somewhere in between. I'm an outlining pantser. Uh, I have an idea of where I want the story to go, but how the characters interact, how they how they talk, uh, the adventures they uh, and trials and tribulations they go through uh, develops as the story goes along. So I may have uh, starting points or chapter titles uh, to to start it off uh, to kind of jog my memory, but uh, I, I fly by to the seat of my pants fairly often. Uh, and I think uh, all all good writers some some are very very structured, uh, and they uh, even good sci fi novelists and and uh, urban fantasy uh, novelists and some of my mill sci fi guys uh, uh, are are outliners, but a, a great many of them are are pantsers. Uh, and it comes through in the writing. It's actually pretty fun to read. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that's really got to kind of be hard. Right. So you start off on page one and, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of know you're going to write about, you know, the Battle of Waffle House 814. But where does all that spin and story come from that, um, you know, this person is interjecting with this person. And then, you know, in the middle of the book, there's a twist and there's a turn. And then you finally bring that all together at the end. But that's got to be stressful as heck. No, no, it's not stressful at all. It is actually fun as heck. Uh, what's stressful is trying to do that when you're not in a creative frame of mind, you know, and with my depression, ugh, sometimes muse just ain't there. And the only thing that you can do is force yourself to write and get something on the page. And which is what I've been doing for, for half the time uh, in the last year. And I've been very productive. But it has not been easy. When I'm at my best, the writing just flows, and I'm just typing away, and I'm giggling and or crying as as the case may be, uh, and enjoying the hell out of it. And it just comes out; it flows like a waterfall. But the days that it doesn't flow like a waterfall is where it takes some work ethic and some discipline, and you have to get the story on the page, no matter how bad you think it is, and then find your muse and and find the 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 spark in it in the editing process. So now you got a framework out there that you can tweak and everything. But yeah. when I'm, when I'm writing Cecil, the combat wombat or, or uh, uh battle of waffle house, eight fourteen, or, or call to the Rougarou uh, is one about a Cajun werewolf. Um, I'm just thinking like, you know, I'm typing and I'm drinking a beer and eating a snack and I'm giggling, you know, I'm going, oh, this would be great. This would be great. You know, oh, wait, 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 wait. what does the Rougarou do here? Oh, whoa, he rapes the, the guy's mother's dog. Oh, my God, what would that look like, you know? It's a family um, show, Kelly Grace. And I'm trying family. to, well, I'm trying to do this where, with, with in, the, in the setting of uh, 1980s kids in a southern Louisiana trailer park, you know. And, and you you ride your bikes everywhere and you just you know it's cut off jeans and flip-flops the entire summer long and uh hunting and fishing and and 
swimming in the in the bayou and and that sort of thing and and listening to your 1980s mixtapes you know where you you know give these youngsters the idea of what it was like to make a mixtape where you had to uh call in the request line and and, and, and then wait your the turn dj yeah and cuss the dj that wouldn't shut the hell up that's right he's talking song. over your music yeah, yeah that's I mean, right he, these kids today don't know what we have to do no in oh, the snow both ways both ways and by god we were grateful but um <laughs> you know i've got a little bit of different style of writing i don't sit down and write so one of the things that I do is I, you know, I have the outline and I know what I'm going to write in the chapter. I know how I want the chapter to flow. So they all look the same. I actually record my books mm -hmm. and yeah. I actually send them out to be transcribed and then I edit the transcription. So, oh. yeah, so I don't sit down and write. I mean, because I'll see on Facebook where you'll say I wrote 13,000 words today. You know, I wrote 5,000, 5,600 words today. I'm like, well, that's just a waste mm -hmm. of time because we can talk a lot faster than we can write. Yeah. And I've got a transcriptionist uh, that I found on Fiverr, uh, Fiverr.com. There's a lot of mm -hmm. people that do work I've used there. them for, yep. for logos and such yep. in the past. Yep. And, um, and I have a transcriptionist that I send the audio files to and they get me the transcriptions relatively quickly. And then I sit down in front of them and I type them and say, well, I didn't mean this here, or that I misspoke here, or well, let me add this right here. And then it gives me yeah. that opportunity now to add to the the voice recording than just for me to sit there and and be motivated to say, okay, what do I want to write here? And yeah. as you talk about, that could be very challenging sometimes. But sitting here, if you give me a topic, and one of the things that I used to do, just getting off task a little bit, one of the things that I used to do when I taught instructor methodology courses is I wanted individuals to have a good feel for impromptu presentation, right? Mm -hmm. So the, we used to have a yellow box. And in the yellow box, I used to pick people. I used to stop the lecture. I used to pick people to come up and then pick something out of the yellow box. And they had to talk about it for three minutes. So mm -hmm. when we start to think about this as instructors, we need to be able to have the ability to turn on a dime, to change the topic, and talk about something that we weren't prepared to talk about. Right. Yeah. So for me, recording my um, book is a lot easier the first time that it is sitting down. And I'm not a fast typer. I mean, I didn't yeah. I didn't pay attention in typing class in high school because uh -huh. uh, okay. nobody was nobody. <laughs> exactly. Nobody was typing. But yeah. you know what? I can edit and I can talk yeah. and uh, it gets me through that process quicker. Yeah, I. I, I don't do that so much as because for me, you know, I'm, I'm at heart a storyteller and everything that, you know, the, the things that I write are, are basically an extension of, of sitting around the squad room. No shit there. I was, uh, and we had this patient one time, or let me tell you about this call, um, some dude or, or some dude. Yeah. Yeah. The kindred, the some dude chronicles that right. all started with, you know, playing on that, that conceit about the, 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 infamous criminal mastermind that's responsible for so much of the havoc that we see every day. Um, but for me, the, the, the muse comes in putting it down in words. Uh, but I do, uh, I, I'm struck with inspiration often enough that I make recordings to myself to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be driving along and I'll say, Oh, Siri, take a note. Uh, and boom, we're doing that. Uh, this is, uh, and, Nancy McGee is very much like that as well. The problem is, is Nancy is so ADD that she can't remember to bring a recorder with her or, or to bring the, you know, there's a, but she's got a phone. It's on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. To, to use that, you remember the, the, the movie in the, in the eighties, uh, night shift with Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton Great and movie. Michael Keaton is Great this, this man, you know? Yeah. I'm an idea, man, Chuck. That's Nancy. I'm an idea, man, Chuck, you know, here, here's an idea. Free mayonnaise tuna fish. <laughs> <laughs> feed feed mayonnaise feed the tuna, to the tuna, feed fish, the tuna you know? the mayonnaise and the, yeah. yeah yeah you know and he's, he's he's saying it into his voice recorder but i do that sort of thing so if i'll come up with uh i'm doing uh, i did a panel this week at uh at liberty con uh where it's called no blank there i was uh and it's public safety and and military guys telling war stories funny and and uh funny war stories and um every time i'm sitting in one of these things Somebody tells a story and it's, oh man, I, that reminds me of a really good one I could tell. Um, and if I don't get them on paper or recorded somewhere, 
uh, I lose them. So my phone is jammed up with notes for story ideas. And that as a practical tip would be one of the biggest uh, tips I would give to our, our listeners and thinking that they, uh, that they have a book in them uh, or a, a story title or a book title in them is uh, make yourself notes and, and jot these things down and you can flesh them out later. But uh, all too often they, they escape after you close your eyes and sleep. Yeah. Let me give them my, let me give them my final thought, Kelly, and give them your final thought and we'll go. You know, if you want to write a book about your EMS experiences and your call, maybe it was your training, maybe it was why you got into EMS, maybe it was, you know, all the the people that you've interacted with from your team, start off with your title, develop your chapters, and then um, outline how you want your chapters to flow. But if you got titles in you, send them to us, man. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll support you. You know, we'll talk about them. Um, you know, we'll help you do it because that's really what it comes down to. It's all about mentorship. It's all about role models. It's all about, and let me tell you what, I I never imagined that I wanted to ever write a book in my life. And I'm here now because you know what? I just love to teach and I love to be able to share one of the reasons I do the show. One of the reasons I go to conferences and speak and you can do it too, you know, and don't think that you can, if you're listening to this and you got a book title in you, let's get you there and let's get you to the end of that. But what's your final thought for the listeners kelly um uh i'm i'm constantly reminded of the the quote by hemingway uh writing is easy all you got to do is sit at the typewriter and bleed um and 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 all too many people when they write are are quote unquote writing you know uh if you tell a good story you can ignore every single convention of formal writing you can use run-on sentences and fragments and screw up your punctuation and everything. Just tell a good story and, and don't worry so much about structure. Get it out there on the page um, and, and you can worry about structural editing and proofreading later. Um, but make yourself those notes and, and realize that, that you have, you have uh, valuable and rich experiences to share with the rest of us. And, and the general public doesn't want to hear about the gross car wreck uh, that you ran or the, or the shooting or the stabbing. Those are di- a dime a dozen. Those are days that end in Y. What makes that story readable uh, and, and, and uh, relatable to the average reader is the human side of it, how it affected you. Um, and, and simple. All you got to do is uh, sit as the typewriter and bleed. But, hey, that's our, our take on it. We'd like to hear your take. Let's hit us with those titles. Um if you want to, if you want to to get a book out there or a short story out there, we can get you set on the path where it won't cost you anything and show you how to get it done. Uh, and we'd love to to lift you up and, and get some new voices out there. So send us those things at the show at ems1.com. And for myself and co-host Chris Civilero, fellow Amazon best-selling author, thanks for tuning in to Inside EMS. We're going to catch you guys next week. <laughs>